Welcome to the FloridaDefense.com podcast. With over 30 years of strong defense and over 30 years of even stronger results, with FloridaDefense.com, you'll never believe you can't win. All right, welcome to the FloridaDefense.com podcast. We are speaking to Tampa Marijuana Defense Lawyer from Bauer, Kreider & Perry, Mike Kinney. How are you doing today, Mike? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. Well, last podcast, we just kind of had a a quick one on the, uh, you know, just a drug crimes overview. Um, You talked about the three different uh, categories of um, uh, crimes, misdemeanor, felony, trafficking. Um, Today, we're going to be talking about a pretty interesting subject, just, um, you know, marijuana, uh, cannabis, pot, weed. What's, uh, well, let's start there. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, yeah, I think marijuana is an interesting subject because I can tell you that Probably when I was going to law school, I never would have envisioned um, such a movement that I have seen where different states are actually uh, um, successful in having recreational um, pot use or marijuana use. That's interesting to me. Uh, In this state, um, there have been attempts to to do that, but still, um, it is illegal to possess marijuana. It is illegal to possess marijuana for any use, whether it be for medical use or for private use. Um, the possession of marijuana comes in two, really, really three groupings. Um, the first grouping is just simple possession of marijuana. Simple possession of marijuana is where uh, you're in possession of marijuana or a, you know, a pot plant or some item that is under a certain weight. Does marijuana. that also include paraphernalia, a pipe? Um, with residue on it, or well, it could, okay. it could. It, it really depends upon the facts, and it depends upon your the prosecuting authority. But okay. par- possession of paraphernalia technically is is not a drug in of itself. Okay. Paraphernalia means a drug used to carry, um, store, conceal, or oh, okay. ingest or inhale. Okay. So you know, for instance, a marijuana pipe would be um, used to inhale or ingest marijuana. So that in and of itself is a crime. That's a misdemeanor of the first degree, and it's punishable by the same way, but it does not carry with it a driver's license suspension. Okay. Um, so that's pretty significant with people who are concerned, especially people who may have uh, some significant prior criminal history. Now, if there's enough residue inside of that pipe, um, and I've seen it happen before to where you know there, people are charged with both possession of paraphernalia and marijuana based upon... Um, a little oil that's found behind or maybe just a little bit of burnt uh, residue found inside of the pipe. Um, They certainly can try, uh, they being the prosecuting authority, can can try to convict somebody based upon that. If they have it, they have it. Um, But the idea is is having enough to test it and having enough to show that it actually is something that can be identified as as marijuana. As a so, possession. Okay, so there, you said there's three categories. There was possession. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one is is felony possession. Okay. So felony possession is a possession of any amount of marijuana, 20 grams or, or basically greater than 20 grams. So that would be you know a more significant amount. Uh, it's a third degree felony, and that is punishable by up to five years in prison for a first time offense. That's you know usually not not that significant of a of a crime. It's usually a probationary type sentence and then finally there's the trafficking uh, amount of marijuana and marijuana is unique because it, it requires a I would say it requires a, a large a very large amount to be considered uh, trafficking by possession um, but the trafficking statute says that any person who is in excess of 25 pounds of cannabis or 300 or more pound of cannabis plants commits a felony of the first degree known as trafficking in excess of 25 pounds, but less than 2,000 pounds, that's punishable by three years in the Department of Corrections and a $25,000 fine. Wow. If it's, if it's 2,000 pounds or more, but less than 10,000 pounds, or it's 2,000 or more cannabis plants, it's a seven-year minimum mandatory prison sentence and $50,000 fine. And the last category is if it's 100,000 pounds or more, or is 10,000 or more cannabis plants, such person will be sentenced to mandatory minimum imprisonment of 15 years uh, in the Department of Corrections and a $200,000 fine. And those are minimum mandatory prison sentences. What that means is that a person serves 100% of that sentence. They don't, they don't get out any earlier than 15 years, for instance, if they were sentenced to that. And the judge has no discretion. If a person is convicted of that charge, the judge must sentence that person uh, subject to a few very 
a few exceptions. Okay. And I'm not trying to encourage our audience by this right. question, but um, right. so you're saying that if you have um, 24 pounds, it wouldn't be trapping. Wow. Okay. Right. okay. And that seems like a lot. I mean, yeah. that marijuana is one of those few um, drugs that you need a, a much larger quantity um, to, to get into that ultra um, significant penalty phase uh, that um, trafficking amount. For instance, uh, you know, a drug like oxycodone is four grams. We're talking four grams versus 28 pounds. Right. A lot of that, I think, is based in large part because just the marijuana plant in general. There's a lot of plant material to that. That thing can, can get heavy pretty quickly. Um, so, you know, that may be uh, part of the reason why it needs to be such a significant amount of weight. Okay. And uh, so just like the last one, uh, we talked about whether you get a you know felony or trafficking, even just possession, you want to, the point would be to, to hire a criminal defense attorney early, right? Well, sure, sure. There's a lot, because there's a lot of reasons um, that you wouldn't want any type of conviction, whether it be a misdemeanor or a felony. Um, one of the things that happens is for every one of these, you're going to get a driver, driver's license suspension. And, uh, you know, in the state of Florida, we don't have the same public transportation that somebody might have in, you know, let's say New York. It's very difficult um, to maintain a living without the ability to drive to work, uh, drive to school, drive to the store to get what you need, uh, like food. So it's, uh, it's, it's particularly burdensome. Also, the to prove possession is is unique. Um, a lot of times these possession cases come up in involving more than one person, you know, meaning usually it's not one person is, is stopped. Usually it's in a group of, of folks. And a lot of legal issues are raised with that because that's called constructive possession. And constructive possession comes up when, when there is uh, more than one person who might be able to have exercised dominion or control over the substance. And it's very difficult, in my mind, uh, for the prosecutor to prove constructive possession uh, if they don't have the necessary statements from witnesses or if they don't have the necessary uh, statements from your client. And some people might think all is lost and just go in and give up, um, but there's a lot more to it than, than just being caught in a car with drugs. Mike, anything else on uh, marijuana? No, sir. All right. Well, you've been listening to the FloridaDefense.com podcast. Thank you for listening to the FloridaDefense.com podcast. Our firm has over 130 years of combined legal defense experience. Strong defense, stronger results. Consultations are free. Visit FloridaDefense.com today.